Hey guys, and welcome back to this GCSE chemistry revision series brought to you by revisechemistry.uk. In this video, we're going to be looking at the different chemical calculations from empirical formula to concentration calculations to using the mole and working out reacting masses. Okay, we're going to start by calculating empirical formula. On the screen, I've put a question, and in that question it says, in an experiment, 1.27 grams of hot copper reacts with iodine vapor to form 3.81 grams of copper iodide. Calculate the empirical formula of copper iodide. Our first step is to write down the two different elements that are involved. And when I find doing empirical formula calculations, I find the best way to do this is as a grid. Now during this experiment, we were told that 1.27 grams of copper was reacted with 2.54 grams of iodine. So these are the masses. Now we need to calculate what their atomic values are. And normally they tell you in the question, but if not, we can just quickly look it up on the periodic table to find that the atomic mass of copper is 63.5 and the atomic mass for iodine is 127. Now the next step is to work out uh, moles. Now we can call this moles, but if we're not too sure on moles, we don't have to call it moles. We can just work out the ratio of how much copper there is to iodine by just dividing the mass by the AR. Uh, and I'm gonna call it moles because technically it is the mole value. Uh, and what we do is we do 1.27 divided by 63.5 for copper, and that gives us a value of 0 0.02. And if I divide 2.4 by 127, that also gives me a value of 0 0.02. Now, empirical formula, the definition you need to know is that it is the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in a substance. Now, these aren't whole numbers, so we need to divide them both by the smallest value. And as they are both the same, we just divide them both by 0 0.02 and that gives us a chemical ratio so our ratio once we do 0 0.02 divided by 0 0.02 is 1 to 1 so our ratio effectively is 1 to 1 and that means that when I write the empirical formula for copper iodide it's going to be one copper atom for every iodine atom and so the empirical formula for copper iodide is CuI What if I then did a different chemical reaction? Okay, in this different chemical reaction, I react 0.96 grams of magnesium with 2.84 grams of chlorine to make magnesium chloride. Okay, and I'm trying to find out what the empirical formula is of magnesium chloride. Now, again, we start with a very similar setup. I write the different chemical names, the different element names. I draw my table, so I have mass, I have AR, I have moles, and then I have my ratio. So for magnesium, I was told that there were 0.96 grams, and for chlorine, I was told that there are 2.84 grams. By looking at the periodic table, I can look up their atomic masses, and for magnesium, I know it's 24, and for chlorine, I know it's 35.5. If I divide both of these masses by the atomic values, so 0.96 divided by 24, for magnesium gives me a mole value of 0 0.04 and 2.84 divided by 35.5 gives me 0 0.08. I have to divide both of these by the smallest value and as the smallest value is 0 0.04 because I'm trying to get the simplest whole number ratio. So this gives me a value of one, and this gives me a value of two. So working out this, my ratio is one to two. So that means for every one magnesium, I also have two chlorines. What if the question says a compound is found to contain 50.05% sulfur and 49.95% oxygen by weight? What do we do then? Because that's not masses we've been given. Well, we still draw out our table, sulfur and oxygen. We're gonna write mass, AR, moles, and we're also gonna write ratio. So for sulfur, we're told that there are 50.05%. Now, if we add that number to the 49.95%, we get a total of 100%, which means if we assume that the total mass of the compound is 100 grams, 50.05% is just 50.05 grams. And we can do the same for oxygen, 49.95 grams. 
The atomic mass for sulfur is 32 and for oxygen it's 16. That means the total number of moles, so this divided by this, is 1.56 and the total number of moles of this divided by this is 3.12. Now if I work out my ratio, which I just divide both of them by the smallest number, 1.56, gives me a ratio of 1 to 2. So that means that for every one sulfur atom, there are two oxygen atoms. Okay then, so what's a mole? Well, a mole is a chemical measurement which actually equates to a specific number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. We call this the Avogadro constant. This tells us how many atoms, molecules, or ions there are of a given substance. And we can relate it to its relative atomic mass. So if I had one mole of carbon, that would mean I had 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles of carbon, but it also means that I have 12 grams of carbon, okay? because the relative atomic mass of carbon is 12. If I had a mole of sodium, that would mean that I had 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles of sodium, but it also means that I have 23 grams of sodium, because sodium's relative atomic mass is 23. Knowing this information, I can use moles in lots of different calculations, such as concentration, empirical formula, uh, but lots of these calculations we can do without using moles. You only need to know about moles if you're doing the higher tier qualification. Some simple calculations that you need to be able to use are things like moles equals mass divided by the MR, or the relative formula mass. And a very simple question might ask you to calculate the number of moles in 20 grams of magnesium oxide. Now, for magnesium oxide, magnesium has an MR of 24, and oxygen has an MR of 16. So the total relative formula mass for magnesium oxide is 40. And because there's 124 and 116, add that together and we get 40. We're told that there are 20 grams of magnesium oxide, so mass divided by MR, so 20 divided by 40, and that gives us 0.5 moles. Okay, so in 20 grams of magnesium oxide, there are 0.5 moles. You may be asked to calculate the number of moles needed to react fully with a certain chemical. So in our equation 2mg plus O2 makes 2mgO. In this equation we're told that two moles of magnesium react with one mole of oxygen. So if I have six moles of magnesium I'm only going to need three moles three moles of oxygen to fully react to make magnesium oxide. This is a ratio of how many moles of each compound or each element are needed to fully react. And a reacting masses calculation takes our chemical equation and it goes, well, what if I start with a certain amount of mass of something? How much mass of a product could I make or vice versa? So the question we're going to look at is, what happens when I burn 12 grams of magnesium and how much mass of magnesium oxide am I going to make based on that? So if I start with 12 grams of magnesium, that's my mass, and I write down what my MR or my AR is here, I'm then going to need to work out moles. And I would recommend that when we do this kind of calculation, you draw a very similar sort of table. So the MR of magnesium, we've already written it down over here, is 24. So to work out how many moles I've got here, I'm going to do 12 divided by 24, and that's going to give me 0 0.5. Now, you may be wondering why I've not used this 2 here to work out how many moles I've got. And I'm going to refer you back up to here, when I said that this was a ratio of how many moles of magnesium reacts with how many moles of oxygen. And so what this means is for every two moles of magnesium, I will make two moles of magnesium oxide. Now I've only got 0.5 moles, and basically this is saying whatever I have here is what I'm gonna make here. So I've got 0.5 moles, so I will make 0.5 moles of magnesium oxide. The MR of magnesium oxide, the relative formula mass we worked out was 40. 
And so I can take my moles equals mass over MR equation. I can rearrange it to work out that mass equals moles times by MR. And so if I do 40 times by 0 0.5, I get 20 grams of magnesium oxide that we would produce if we burnt 12 grams of magnesium fully in air. Just to double check that we've done this correctly, if we start back here and we go, right, if I've got 0 0.5 moles, how many moles of oxygen do I need? Well, it's a two to one ratio, so whatever this is, halved. So I only need 0 0.25 moles of oxygen. The relative formula mass of O2 is actually 32, because there are two oxygens here. So it's two lots of 16. And so if I do 0 0.25 times by 32, which is effectively uh, what is a quarter of 32, I get eight grams. And that adds up and agrees with conservation of mass. 12 grams plus eight grams will make 20 grams of magnesium oxide. The last thing that we're gonna look at in this video is concentration calculations. And we're just gonna have a quick go at working out concentration. Now, concentration equals mass divided by volume. And if you go on to do the triple content, if you go on to do separate chemistry, you'll find that actually we can do concentration equals moles divided by volume, but that comes a little bit later on in this course. So, if I've got, uh, for example, 0 0.5 grams of sodium chloride, and I'm gonna dissolve that in water, and the total volume of that solution ends up to be 3.0 centimeters cubed. What is the concentration of this solution? Now, because I've been given my value in centimeters cubed, which is another way of saying milliliters, I actually have to convert it into slightly different units. And the units that we use in concentration and volume in chemistry are decimeters cubed. And there are 1,000 centimeters cubed in one decimeter cubed, which means that whatever our value is in centimeters cubed, we always have to divide it by a thousand before we can use it in our concentration equation. So for sodium chloride, my mass is 0 0.5 grams. I'm dividing it by three divided by a thousand to get that into decimeters cubed. And you can do that before this calculation or you can do it in this calculation. Just make sure when you type it into your calculator, you type it in with the brackets. And that's gonna give me a value of 166 grams per decimeter cubed. Okay? And our units are grams per decimeter cubed. You may see them written as GDN to the minus three. It means exactly the same thing. Thank you very much for watching this video. You will find more over on our website, revisedchemistry.uk. We're currently in the process of upgrading our website. So if you could go over and have a look at that, we would really appreciate your feedback. But until next time, guys, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.